Syringes can be used in many types of scientific projects. What I find interesting is if you seal off the end cap and pull the piston back, you can create a vacuum inside of the syringe. Now with some water inside and some lubrication, you get a pretty strong springing effect as the piston shoots back up to the top. Now, the other day I realized that if you mount the top part of the syringe on something which would allow it to move freely upwards, pull the piston down and release, you get a pretty strong effect launching the syringe straight up into the air and possibly making a dent in the roof. But how about we expand on this and try it with a slightly larger syringe? So to test this syringe, I'm going to have to launch it outside because I don't really fancy putting a hole in the roof of my shed. And also it'd be interesting to see how high this thing goes. So I'm going to have to make some kind of uh, launch stand for it because I can't easily take my vice outside. Okay, so I've got the large syringe set up in its launch pad. Uh, it's essentially just a block of wood to hold this uh, string in tension and a small uh, peg below two screws for the release mechanism. Now, I'm, I've got the high-speed camera running over there, so I'm going to have to pull the release from over there, run across over there, and uh, hopefully this launches up into the air. <laughs> okay, large syringe rocket test in three, two, one. Uh, that didn't work as expected. <laughs> what happened there? Okay, so it seems as though um, the speed of that piston moving upwards has just taken the whole top off of that syringe. <laughs> um, where is the actual piston? I didn't watch where it landed. There it is. Okay, so I've now put 20 millimetres of air inside of the piston before pulling it back. So it's not going to have um, as much of a vacuum as previously. Um, but hopefully that'll prevent the top of the syringe from exploding. In three, two, one. Oh, maybe I had too much air in there. <laughs> before I continue with the testing, let's look at how these syringes launch into the air. There are three main things occurring which cause the syringe to launch. The first is the atmospheric pressure pushing upwards on the piston due to the vacuum inside of the cylinder. This tiny 10 milliliter syringe experiences 17.7 newtons of upwards force, or the equivalent to 1.8 kilograms required to pull the piston down. The second is a conversion of this potential energy into kinetic energy as the piston accelerates to the top of the syringe, reaching a top speed of about 20 meters per second, or 44.8 miles per hour in under six thousandths of a second. And finally, the momentum transfer from the piston to the syringe. As the piston and syringe are almost exactly 3.5 grams each, the final velocity of the piston and syringe combined is halved and launches the whole thing skyward at 10 meters per second. To maximize this end velocity after the momentum transfer, we need a low mass syringe and a high mass piston. However, too heavy of a piston will reduce the speed at which it hits the top of the cylinder. So there is a balance to be struck. Right, so I've now got a five gram piston and I've removed all the air in the hope that with the weighted piston, there's less uh, kinetic energy hitting the top of the, I suppose it's the same kinetic energy, just lower velocity. In three, two, one. While the weighted piston launched the syringe a bit higher, it's still not very impressive. I think in order to improve on this syringe rocket, we need something slightly larger. Something like this. To turn this acrylic tube into a giant syringe, I had to 3D print a bulkhead that will hold an O-ring at one end. This will be secured in position using three bolts threaded through the acrylic tube. But before installing the bulkhead, I need to install the piston, which was a dense 3D printed part with mounting space for lead tire weight in case it wasn't heavy enough. Once the top bulkhead was bolted in position, the piston can be pulled back to create a vacuum. And we now have a 560 milliliter syringe, or nearly one pint. I then added some fins and printed a mount to hold the retracted piston before launch. Okay, so this rocket is now ready for a test. Uh, there's actually a slight leak in the O-ring system um, when I pull it back. So 
What I need to do is I need to load it up really quick, take it outside and then launch it as quick as possible. Uh, because the more air that leaks into the vacuum, obviously the less uh, force that will push the piston upwards. So what I've got to do is I've got to, so I need to hold this like this on the launch pad, put it next to my vise and get this funny handle I've made out of a peg to grip onto the string which attaches to the piston and then I need to very carefully pull this back. As soon as it gets all the way back, I need to put this pin through the rope that holds the piston. Then before it all leaks, I need to quickly run outside and give it a test. <laughs> Here we go, and, oh. <laughs> yep, that was terribly disappointing. The piston accelerated upwards as expected, but stopped short of the bulkhead due to air leaking into the cylinder before launch. This meant the piston couldn't gather anywhere near the required speed for this thing to launch to a slightly more impressive altitude. So I decided to launch it from a table with the idea that I could pull the piston down and instantly release it, reducing the amount of air entering the cylinder. But it still wasn't great. The piston reached an upwards velocity of 19 meters per second, and due to the high mass of the acrylic tube, the end velocity of the piston and cylinder was just 4.8 meters per second. It seems like there are multiple factors that need to be fixed. One, the air leaking around the O-rings is reducing the strength of the vacuum. Two, the friction of the O-ring sliding up the cylinder is preventing the piston from reaching a high end velocity. And three, the weight of the acrylic tube is just too high, making for a low end velocity after the momentum transfer. Let's move on to plan B. Now this is known as a vacuum cannon. You may have seen videos of people previously launching ping pong balls at really high speeds uh, using a tube and pulling a vacuum inside of that tube. Now essentially how it works is the top here is sealed off with just some basic packing tape. And there is a projectile in here, this blue part here, and there is a piston. Now, by pulling on this rope, I can pull the piston downwards. And instead of holding the piston at the bottom and releasing it, launching the tube upwards, I actually pull the piston out the bottom of the tube. Now, because this whole cylinder is a vacuum inside, the air from the atmospheric pressure rushes in and pushes this blue projectile up at really high speed, breaking through the packing tape and hopefully launching into the sky. So um, let's see if this actually works. Okay, here we go. Vacuum cannon test number one. In three, two, one. Well, that went high, not majorly high. <laughs> okay, vacuum cannon test number two. In three, two, one. So this vacuum cannon essentially eliminates all of the previous issues. There are now two o-rings on the piston to reduce any air leaking in. The projectile doesn't require an o-ring so the friction is reduced and there isn't any momentum transfer, resulting in a projectile velocity of 49 meters per second or nearly 110 miles per hour. Now while this cannon may sound impressive, the pop noise is nothing but the packing tape bursting, and there is no difference in projectile speed from this to this. And considering it exits the tube at 110 miles per hour, it doesn't go very high due to a lack of stability. I want to explore this vacuum cannon system further in the future, but it's getting a bit off track from the syringe rockets. So there is one more thing I want to build, and if you own a 3D printer, you'll be able to build one too. But first, I'd like to mention the sponsor for this project, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. A premium membership gives you unlimited access, so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. I highly recommend the Advanced Aerial Videography class, as it runs through a short film shoot from start to end, and in the same way a regular camera is so much more than just getting a single shot, the drone can be used to capture all types of unique shots. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable, with an annual subscription working out at less than $10 a month. Skillshare is sponsoring this project by offering a two-month free trial if you sign up via the link in the description below. 
So if you want to check out more about Skillshare and help support my projects, go check out the link in the description down below. So this is a 3D printed syringe rocket launcher. I know this project has done a full circle back to the small 10 milliliter syringes, uh, but they just work so well. With the low friction piston uh, combined with the mass of the piston being very close to the mass of the cylinder, they just, they, they launch so well. And by pressing down this small tab, uh, they, they launch quite violently too. <laughs> now, if you want to build this syringe rocket launcher at home, uh, the download files for it will be down in the description below. Uh, so if you have a 3D printer yourself or you know of a 3D printing service nearby, uh, you can build your own syringe rocket launcher. Now, I've tried different types of syringe brands. Uh, this is a slightly more expensive version uh, because it has a screw-on cap. Um, and these work really well. They're really easy to set up. But this is also a cheaper version and these also fit this launcher and work quite well. What I do is I suck up some water into the syringe which helps to get rid of any air bubbles inside of the syringe as well as acting as some lubrication. I then use a hot glue gun to inject hot glue into the nozzle of the syringe and pull the piston back slightly to suck the hot glue in. This creates a pretty good seal and it works perfect for these rockets as well as the hot glue on the end acting like a bit of a buffer if you hit anything hard, um, it sort of protects the, the nozzle end of the syringe. To load the syringe onto the launcher, you just place a syringe at the top and the handles of the syringe should fit there. And then you pull the plunger down, hook the handle into the tab, and then you just press this button to release. Now obviously, safety precautions, don't load this thing with your head above it. Uh, these things do go quite fast and most syringes have a pointy end on them. Um, so obviously be careful with that but if you enjoyed this project it'd be great if you could leave a thumbs up down below if you're new to my channel and want to see more odd projects similar to this then please click subscribe down below and also a massive massive thank you to all of my supporters over on patreon.com I honestly couldn't put the time and effort into these projects without your support so thanks once again for that thanks once again for watching and I'll see you in the next video goodbye